So hello everyone. Uh, welcome to EdmodoCon 2018. Uh, my name is uh, Hannes Murray. I'm responsible for advanced projects at Edmodo, um, which basically means uh, trying to apply AI and machine learning um, and see how this can improve the lives of our teachers. Um, I'm excited to present our next uh, uh, speaker, Hatem uh, Radwan. Hatem is a high school science teacher and an Emodo ambassador from Dubai. Um, he is very involved with several uh, teaching organizations in the UAE, and he also has a particular interest in STEM best practices. I also learned recently that <laughs> all of Hatem's siblings are teachers <laughs> too, uh, so we know he comes from a really cool family. So. Uh, I'm very excited about uh, Adam's presentation because, uh, just as I, um, he is also wondering how technology uh, and effective learning goes together. Um, he's going to be uh, talking about how teaching is evolving, and hopefully after his talk you'll have a few new tools on your uh, technology tool belt. Um, I'm sure you're all interested in participating in the conversation. Uh, there's a, if you sign up for it, sign into Edmodo and follow Hatem's topic, Effective Learning in the Digital Age, there's also a link on this page. Uh, you can ask questions and we will answer at the end. Um, so without further ado, please welcome Hatem. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Hannes, for the introduction. So good morning, good afternoon, and good evening for all the people joining us across the globe. I know it's evening in some part, so my parents are watching me, and it's around 9 a.m., 9 p.m., sorry. Um, I'm honored to be here. Thanks for Edmodocon that is giving us this chance to meet once in a year, even though once is not enough, so we're asking for more. Um, I choose effective learning in the digital age to be the topic of my uh, presentation, because I do believe that Technology must lead to effective learning. At the end of the day, we want to check how our students are learning. So that's why sometimes technology fails when it doesn't meet this goal, which is effective learning, right? So uh, before I start my presentation, um, I'm, let me introduce myself. Um, I'm Hatem Radwan. I'm from Beirut, Lebanon. I moved to Dubai in 2010 and where I started my teaching career as a biology teacher and, uh, and subject leader in Dubai International School. Then I moved to Al Ittihad Private School. Um, Besides teaching, uh, I work in curriculum design and differentiation and helping uh, teachers implement technology in their classrooms. I'm sharing this picture. This is my wife, Reem. Uh, I just got married a couple of months ago. Uh, I wanted to share this picture with you, uh, with you because um, Reem is my source of inspiration. She gave me a great push in order to move forward and evolve, and uh, she is uh, one of the reasons why I'm here today, if not the reason. Um, it's very important to have this close uh, person who always believes in you and push you to step forward. Because all of us, we fear this taking this step. And we have something like negative sound inside that tells us you are going to fail, you are not going to make it. So we need to get inspired. And we teachers are the main source of inspiration. That's why I wrote all educators across the world are one family that share the same DNA of giving. I'm coming from uh, a biology background, so you have to expect a lot of scientific terms in my presentation. And I believe that this is true because we are a source of, of inspiration and we give. But nowadays, it's different than giving within your classroom, within your district, or given across the globe. So why don't we move from having this impact from the classroom to having it across the globe. In my presentation, I want to discuss the challenges that teachers face in using technology, and I want to highlight on how we can overcome these challenges by using Edmodo. So first of all, let me show you a, a video about Dubai, a smart city, the city that uh, did a lot in technology, and it's really challenging to be a teacher in Dubai. And uh, I'll show a bit about what al Ittihad Private School, my school, is doing in terms of technology. The visionary leadership of His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum, Vice President and Prime Minister of the UAE and ruler of Dubai, 
raised a city out of the desert. With every passing week, we break new records, and the world is watching. Now we're working together to set a global standard for smart government, where technology brings agencies into perfect synchronization, transforming the way we interact with the people of Dubai. At Had Private School, the, mi the mission of the school is to prepare the students for the 21st century by providing an effective environment where they can build the skills, leadership skills they need in order to become effective citizens and lifelong learners and global thinkers. Across the school, advanced technology is used in all grade levels, as can you see, um, and I'm very proud joining this school and uh, talking about it today. So. As a biologist, I usually get inspired uh, with biologists. The age of the universe is 14.7 billion years, and we humans are only 200,000 years. But we achieved to overcome all the challenges and the changes that happened. Why? Because we have the nature power of evolving. We have this internal power that allows us to overcome the challenges for the sake of our existence. Charles Darwin said in 1871, he was the first to mention evolution, and he said that the species who are most responsive to change are those the strongest that are able to survive. Now, the world is different in, in the 21st century, and the globe is one community where everything is connected by technology. So, taking Charles Darwin's words, we have no other choice than evolving. And education is taking part of this. Because education must meet the needs of the new generation. So education nowadays must move along with technology. But the question is, how can, as educators, use technology in order to cater for effective learning? So today, the students are different from the students of yesterday. And so are the teachers. No up, new approaches in educational systems arrive, such as e-learning and STEM and others. So the educators of, to, of today as described by George Kors, they have like characteristics that they have to share. These characteristics are an educator of 21st century must be a relationship builder, a learner, inclusive, reflective, networked, innovator, leader, storyteller, designer, and an artist. It's too much? No, it's not too much. <laughs> because we educators have all of these. We have this power of learning and doing networking and being innovators. But I will add one more characteristic for this, which is willing to grow, because the world is changing. So we need to have this will to grow and to evolve along with technology. So I'll start uh, discussing a bit about the challenges that teachers and or educators are facing nowadays. And I'll start with this common challenge that all of us are, failing, uh, are facing. Sorry. It's the wrong use of internet. From 2000 to 2000, 18. Now, 52% of the global population are internet users. We are talking about more than 3.5 billion users. And most of them are between the age of 12 to 30. So, we have this uh, wrong idea with our pupils that they think that they can find everything on the internet, and they share this habit that they type whatever they want, copy whatever they get, and give it to us. Actually, this is a challenge because we need to direct how they and instruct how they have to use internet, right? So uh, I'll be discussing in my presentation how can we solve this issue using a model. I'll move to the second uh, challenge, which is very important, and many teachers fail to use technology because not all of their students are engaged. So technology doesn't mean equal engagement. So how can we solve the problem of disengaged students? Here in the illustration, I intended to give a bit more space for engagement because when your students are engaged, they can learn effectively. Even if you don't have technology tools, engagement equal learning. But nowadays, we are talking about the 21st century, and we have to use technology. 
So how can we use technology in order to cater for effective learning and in order to make our students more engaged? To answer your question, I think it starts with uh, instructional strategies that the educators put that meet the needs of all the students. There is no one rule that fits all the students. So you have to understand what quality of students you have, what type of learners you have, and then you have to address them in differentiated instruction using technology. And I'll be discussing furthermore in the coming slides. And I'll discuss one more uh, challenging, um, that we all, we all face, one more challenge, which is expectation of schools across the globe, which is growing higher and higher. And at the end of the day, all of this is putting more pressure on educators and more frustration. So they are asking now for the benchmarking exams that are done across the globe. And the schools do care about these exams in addition to other uh, uh, requests from the teachers. So adding all these challenges together, in addition to time management and students' progress, put us in a point where we have to proceed or we have to quit. So what are you going to choose? Proceeding. Because uh, we have this power of evolving and surviving, as I said. So how this picture is related to what I'm saying. Isaac Newton uh, described or said that all objects at rest will remain at rest. And objects in motion will remain in motion until an external force changes their state. And he mentioned inertia. And he said that all objects have the tendency to resist the change of motion. Objects like to stay as they are unless an external force changes them. But we are not objects. We are humans. So we don't need to have this resistance inside of us. We don't need to have this fear of change inside of us. We need to move forward. We need to, to stick to what Darwin said, that if we don't evolve, if we don't learn more, we are not going to survive. And I'm sure you are going to do it because you are teachers, you are problem solvers. You set answers for questions, and if you don't know the answer, sometimes you create it, right? So for me, I chose Edmodo in order to do this transformation in my classroom and my strategies. And I'll be explaining briefly why Edmodo. In order to have effective learning, we need to have connection. And we need to be able to reflect on what our students are doing and what our uh, colleagues are doing. We need to find resources that match our standards. And we need to be able to do assessments online. And we need to do this kind of management unlike social media, that we can connect with our students, but we cannot manage what they are doing in educational terms. And we need to be able to set our instructions online. And one more, we need to have our students engage in what they are doing, and we need to see how much they are progressing. So if you put all these together in one platform, we can reach effective learning. And that's what Edmodo is doing. So I'm going to present a bit about practical strategies you can use inside your classroom in order to reach this. So we live in a world where everyone can have a voice. We need to find a safe way for our students to have an audience. In this example, one of my students posted this picture that I didn't know about. And she wrote, Mr. Hatim always seems nice and friendly, but this picture shows the other side. So it's good at from time to time to have like some fun in this platform, even though it's educational. But this will make it more user friendly for our teenagers to express their thoughts and their ideas uh, and uh, reflect what, what they want to say. And in this uh, screenshot, um, I'll share a short story about my student. He had a, a brain cancer when he was very young, and he did um, a surgery that uh, required to remove part of his brain. And this affected his cognitive, cognitive growth and physical growth. As a result, he was unable to, uh, to communicate with the teachers or to speak uh, properly. Thanks to Edmodo. This student had biology as his best subject. So he used to communicate with me on a regular basis. And I used to be in contact with his parents to discuss his progress. And in this example, he sent me a research about brain cancer. And it's very dramatic that he wrote, or emotional, that he wrote about his case. And thanks to Edmodo, I gave him this badge. I created this badge, and I called it Remarkable DNA. Your DNA codes for intelligence. And this is a very important feature that we need to take put in our mind. We need to celebrate success with our students, and we need to give them rewards when they do something fantastic. And this comes with motivation and pushing them in order to do more progress. So we have to stay connected to our students, and we need to get a lot of likes. Like this post, for example, I got 18 likes on this post. Now, 
let me read the post for you. Dear students, I'd like to apologize for not being able to attend this week for certain circumstances. So uh, yes, they liked the post, and I got some funny comments. Sir, make it two weeks, please. So again, <laughs> it's very important to have like a platform where we can study, learn, and communicate with the students outside the walls of our classroom. So to move next into more practical uh, approaches, how we can use Edmodo, I'm going to show how we can target or hit the elements of a lesson using Edmodo. When I, when I talk about elements of a lesson, I talk about resources, instructional strategies, about uh, delivery of the lesson, the assessment, and the reflection. That's what you need in order to have an effective lesson. So how can we put all this together in one platform? So I'll be talking more about differentiated instruction and using online tools. And in terms of reflection, I'll be talking about parents' engagement. It's something very important that we have to uh, worry about. Starting with the resources, um, my best resource, as one of my uh, colleagues said, is to steal what other teachers put on Edmodo. And what I like about Edmodo, you can go and search for a lot of resources, but you need to match your resources to the standards and the objectives and the activities and the assessments that meet your needs. So finding resources online sometimes will, will give you a lot of details, a lot of stuff that you don't need, but on Edmodo you can find your request. And that's why there is um, the spotlight. In spotlight, you can target your search, and you can write what sort of resource you need. And I'm using this, and if you are not using spotlight, I recommend that you start using it. And thanks for a lot of generous educators across the globe who keep on uh, sharing their best practices. Thanks for them. It's very rich. And I ask you to share your best practices. Because if we want to move from inside the classroom and think about a community across the globe, we need to share, we need to communicate, because communication equals connection. So we need to be connected to all of other educators across the globe, and we need to know what they are doing. And this is kind of thinking outside the box and letting our students learn what other educators are teaching across the globe. Talking about instructional strategy, I'll give uh, like a sample of what I'm doing in my classroom. At the end of the day, you can do it your own way. But we, what we need to ask about effective learning. So how can I use Edmodo in order to create groups and give different tasks in order to target differentiation in my classroom? So I start by creating small groups and make sure that these groups are mixed and have different abilities. So within the same group, I have high achieving students and average students. Then you need to assign different tasks. And here comes the problem that sometimes we use technology and we say we are using technology. But if technology isn't going to meet the objectives and the standards of the lesson, then don't use it. So we need to assign different tasks. And these tasks must meet the standards and the objectives of the lesson. And we need to share the criteria of evaluation. This is something very important in education. Your students have the right to know how they are evaluated. Because when they know, they are giving they are going to give you better work. So you need to share with them how you are evaluating their work so that they can give you better work. You need to provide some instructions. And here, we can solve the problem that the first challenge I talked about. For example, if you see here, this is middle school um, class. I added some links for the students, not one, many, so that they have the choice to serve them and check what they want so that I'll make sure that those students can get the resource from these links that I know they are reliable. So adding more instruction is very important, even though we need them to work alone, but we need to facilitate their work, and we need to guide their work. And then reflection. Please give time for reflection when working with the students. Reflection is a very important tool. We reflect with each for each other work as educators, and students must reflect in for, uh, with each other, and we have to reflect for the students' work. After we reflect and we make sure that they are on the right track, we need to publish and share and teach your students how to share on, Facebook, uh, on Edmodo. Let them put their work, let them reflect on it. And again, we, we, we need to move forward. We need to think about having like a community online, not just within the classroom. And thanks for Edmodo that is giving us this opportunity to do this. So at the end, we need to publish and share the work 
of our students. For example, here another group, another task, but hitting the same objective. Now, I'm going to share with you uh, a model of using an online tool in order to present a lesson. Uh, I usually use Prezi, not because I want, I like it because my students like it, especially when it comes to elementary and middle school students, they like to see this transition and moving and rotation in the screen. So you can put everything you want here, the objectives, the standards, the videos that you want, the assessment, the questions, you can make discussion, and all what you need to do in the lesson, it can be here. But again, in order to make your work systematic and organized, let's use whatever tool you want. But at the end of the day, link it and put it on Edmodo. So by doing this, you are having only one platform where your kids can refer to it whenever they want to refer to it and find everything there. There are a lot of applications and websites and educational platforms. So that's why some teachers fear into stepping into technology. They have a lot of options. Use whatever you want, but Edmodo is giving you one platform where you can put everything. For example, in this lesson about forces, I stole the information from Edmodo. One of the teachers uh, put his work. I modified it. Even he put the virtual lab. Sometimes in science classes, we, are una we don't have the tools to make a lab. So we can do a virtual lab. And I put everything at the end on Edmodo. And the students uh, was tracking what they were doing at the same time. Talking about assessment, I'm not going to focus a lot about assessment because you, had, you have a lot of tools online to do assessment. But I'll, do, I'll say what I'm doing. Um, I like creating quiz on, it, on it model. It's very simple, it's time saving. And I, I need to focus on what uh, one uh, of the speakers talked about is making a library. Doing this is very important, again, to put everything in one platform. So I have a folder for each uh, class I teach. All the resources that I stole, I put it here so that I can refer back to it anytime I want, and this will organize your work. And thanks to Edmodo, which is giving us the chance to track the progress of the students. And this is an important tool you can use in parents, teachers, conferences, and meetings. So if you want to be systematic, you need to do this. You need to put everything in one screen. You can refer to it anytime you want. And again, you can share this with the parents. And I'll be explaining how to get the parents more engaged in Edmodo. So classroom management. Uh, here, I'm addressing mainly the new educators that are new to the field. This is a big problem. When, when we don't have the environment in the classroom, whatever instruction we set, we fail in order to, to target uh, effective learning. So if I want to talk about this, I'm going to consume a lot of time. So uh, please, we are going to continue this discussion uh, on the topics on Edmodo. But I'll be talking about one case that happened to me. So I'll be talking about time management, classroom environment, and disruptive behavior. And I'll share this with you. As teachers uh, grow, we get Alzheimer, you know? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I get this. I have a problem with rem uh, rem remembering the names of my students. And this is a problem in communicating with the students at the early beginning of the year. So, uh, like, my students even get frustrated when I call them wrong name. So, Ahmed, please move from here. It's, oh, I'm not Ahmed. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> so, actually, it's a problem that technology helped me uh, overcome it. So I thought, why I don't I take a picture of each student, write his name? This will be fantastic. So I looked at the Apple Store, and I found this application, which is a teacher kit. Within this application, you can add the picture of the student, the name, and it has a lot of features that you can use in order to have uh, a good classroom environment. If you notice here, one of the students, his name is Hatem Radwan. It's me. So uh, it's very important for you when you, have, when you are struggling with your students to be a student in the classroom. You need to understand your learners. You need to be sitting beside them, knowing how they are thinking. You need to approach them. You must not have this distance like I'm having now, but um, I couldn't move, so I have to say. So you need to approach your students. In this class, this is my team here. Those are my best students. And those students, they didn't score well in the science in the previous year. And I know from the diagnostic tests, that they are not scoring well, and they need constant supervision. And they have this miscommunication with the teacher, because they believe that they are not good, so they don't have expectations about themselves. So they gave up. So what I did is I included myself in their group, and I started working with them. This was amazing. They did a lot of progress. So thanks to this application, you can divide the students into groups, 
And what I like about it, you can take this screenshot, send it to Edmodo prior to the lesson, so that they know where to sit. And this is time saving. One more feature, you can take attendance, and you can add your behavioral comments for the students who are participating, who are not doing well in the classroom, and again, share this picture on Edmodo. Let them know their evaluation. This is great if you do it. And one more thing, you can add your classwork, lab work, grades, and you can use all these data in the parents' meeting. Moving to reflection, I'll be highlighting on parents' engagement. And this is a problem that we all face. Nowadays, parents, it's not like they don't care, but they are busy. So they think that if I attend like once to the school and I ask my, my child, it's great. Or they just ask if he fails. They come, why he failed? Because he didn't ask from the beginning of the year. So uh, I did this just to illustrate that we have direct contact with our students, and the students have direct contact with the parents. But if I delete Edmodo from this diagram, we don't have direct contact with the parents. So thanks to Edmodo, we can communicate with the parents. And it's very important when it comes to elementary and middle school students. But the problem is how to make the parents active users. So like in previous years, I, I used to have like only 10 or 12 parents communicating with me. And those are the parents of the nerds. So <laughs> <laughs> Their kids are doing great. Why are you asking about them? I'm not expecting you to ask about your child. So, so how, how can you get your, y the parents more engaged? You need to set the routine from the beginning of the year. You need to take advantage of the beginning of the year. Set your instruction. Prepare for it. Take one week before you start the school. Put your instructions. Introduce it. Follow it in the first couple of weeks. Then everyone will have it as a routine. So you can take this, um, you can take this sheet which is generated by Edmodo itself. But this sheet isn't so motivating. Like, there is a code inside. You can ask Edmodo to give it this sheet. You can print it, give it to the, uh, to the students, give it to your parents, and let them add this code somewhere uh, on Edmodo. But not all of them are going to be active. So I thought, why don't I modify it a little bit? And I add some points that attract parents. Like, why you need to be on Edmodo? Because you have to follow up with your child's work, you need to check the grades, you need to find all the resources, you need to communicate with the teacher, and I added even the mobile app and QR code so that they can have ac direct access. And what was the result? Still, very few of parents responded. <laughs> so I thought, why don't I give the parents an assignment that they have to do? So I came up with this idea. We science teachers at the beginning of the year uh, we give the safety lab contract to the students where they have to sign and the parents have to sign it before they get engaged in any lab. And this is a policy in the school. So instead of giving this paper to the students and go give it to your parents and sign it, I gave them this paper. And it says that you are kindly requested to sign the safety lab contract and return it by the end of this week. How to do it? You need to create a parent account on Edmodo by visiting Edmodo and download the app. You need to use uh, this group, group code, and uh, you, you, ha you will find the paper there. You sign it, and you return it. And there is a note, bold note down. You must have this contract completed before your child can engage in any lab. And honestly, he's not going to be engaged in any lab because this is a policy, and we need to respect it. So after two weeks, all the parents were there. <laughs> Thank you. It's not enough. If you set a routine, you have to follow up with it. If I did this and I stop, then they are going to forget about it. So you need to assign homeworks for the parents. Not homeworks, it's kind of questionnaire, survey, asking about how, they are do how their kids are doing in, uh, at home, about the reflection. But make sure that you have consistency in doing this. So uh, I talked a bit about uh, how we can use mobile um, as a learning tool. Here, just I want to connect the idea of creating QR codes. And this is something like it's going to be easier for parents to scan a QR code and reach the document that you want them to, to finish. So, and it's very easy for, for users who didn't use QR code yet. It's for free, and you can do it uh, online. You can just copy the link or URL that uh, you want of your document, and you go to any QR code generator and create your QR code. 
So instead of sa sending a lot of instruction how to do it, just send a paper, a message, having the QR code, ask the parents to scan it, and they are there. So it's easy, accessible uh, by the parents. And in this example, at the end of the year, I provided a QR code, and I did using Google Form a survey about uh, the year, about the reflection about their uh, children or their kids' uh, performance and uh, their expectations and what comments they can add. And I send it to the parents and I got the feedback. And this is very important to prepare for the next year. And this is what we need to do. Whenever you start something new, you need to follow up with it and you need to find the criteria of evaluation or measurement, measuring the success of what you are doing. How can you get this? By getting the feedback of all the users, the parents, your colleagues, the students. By doing this, this is the best source of data, the users. So you need to know their feedback. You need to know how, and that's, it happened to me uh, this year that uh, my students in grade 12, they didn't like my strategy because they, they are familiar with another teacher who is amazing. And the last year in grade 12, a new teacher came. We don't need you. So I struggled in the early beginning how to approach the students. So what I did is I told them, please, write in a sticky note. Don't write your name. Write your comments and put it on the desk. And I went and I read the desk. I realized that it was my fault. I was talking too much in the classroom, like, no, <laughs> like now. <laughs> and I was like explaining very fast. And uh, so because I'm not familiar with them. After I read this, I knew what they need. So I changed my strategies. I started making them more engaged and even explaining the lesson. So they felt better after that. And now they are one of my best students. They are graduated and they are heading to the college. So a summary of what I said, you need to change, not you. <laughs> uh, we need, I need to change my mindset. I need to move from the level of being a user to the level of being a leader. Because we teachers are leaders. And I think the biggest shift for educators using technology isn't skill set. It's very easy to learn by your own. It's mindset. You need to think globally. You need to create a digital network, community, unlimited borders. You can communicate with everyone. And for me, when I say effective learning, I say Edmodo. So what is next? Um, I wanted to discuss more about this, but uh, I don't have time, so I created uh, a group for it. But if you go to this group, it's empty because it's not me who's going to fill it. It's you who's going to fill it. So I, you need, how can we uh, reach effective learning and transform our classrooms into technology-based classrooms regardless of the resources we have? So go please to this group. You will find four subgroups. I need teachers to put their experience, their input, and we'll keep discussing on this. So if your classroom has no Wi-Fi and the students cannot have access, how can we do this transformation? Is there any way? This is the question. I'm sure there is a way. So if you have this way, please share it on this group and let us move all together into changing our mindset and into moving outside this small community in the classroom to the global community and become um, global educators and global leaders, digital leaders. Thank you. Thank you so much, Hatem. <laughs> I saw a lot of smiling faces and nodding heads in the audience today, so I'm sure you learned something. Thank you so much. Very You're inspirational. Uh, so we have a question from Mrs. Lalwani, uh, who asks, you mentioned a change of mindset in adopting technology. Where can one start and how? Start now. This is the answer. Start now. Edmodo is giving you all the ability to connect, to find resources. So you need to start now. You need to start at your home. You need to start by moving <laughs> and putting more effort in order to, be key, uh, to become a learner. So I think yeah, Edmodo is giving the best option to start. All what you are discussing today is enough for you to start. So you don't have any excuse. This question is refused. I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, Adam.